Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Andy in Brentwood. You're on the radio, Andy. What are you going to tell me? Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Hello, uh, sir. I just, I've been listening to all the calls, and I just find it out there that, that one of the ladies earlier on the phone said that she's been and seen the film three times, and they liked yeah. it all the way through. Yeah, in they, five days. They, they, they revel in it. They revel in the fact that um, they were all done by... My mother lived in them areas in the 30s, and they were all done by big time. They weren't stabbing each other daily. This is an epidemic in the black community, OK? I'm sorry to say, I'm not an ATL supporter or anything like that, but the fact is, the elephant is in the room, OK? These films are, are, are sort of self-pitying this. I, I went to America, and over there, no welfare, cups for your money as you, you throw money in the cup as you walk out the door of the restaurant. That's what they get. And people are treated like dogs over there. I mean, really roughly. I don't know. No, 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 hold on. No, no, no. I'm, I'm so sorry. There, there is a form of social benefit in the United States. What I'm saying is, in this country today, it's not perfect, but we're better than most countries. I'm not saying we're perfect. And in regards to the empire, obviously we have made we have a lot of errors with the empire. But there's hundreds of years ago, we wasn't around at that time. Surely we need to move forward as a community, all of us. Okay, but, okay. and live together in harmony. Okay, uh, and um, righto. And a movie such as this, I'm sorry, I'm not quite clear. It just you... causes more problems. Right. It just, it, it, and, and they were right to ban it because um, it didn't take Sherlock Holmes to work out that once you put this glorification of this nonsense on screen, and that's what it basically is, okay, the bros and the bruvs and the, um, the get rich and die trying and the fast and the furious movies, all of these movies give a narrative. No, no, the, fa the fast and the furious movies aren't gang movies. Uh, it, they're giving glamorisation of a sort of lifestyle that is not attainable unless you're committing illegal acts. Well, not with The Fast and the Furious. It's, it's a series about fast... I, I just believe these movies do not portray uh, to young people a, a good indication of society. Uh, so get a good they should be profile. censored? Yes, they should be. Because they're, they're what they're what movies would society. you allow? Uh, uh, well, mo movies that doesn't require to, to go to a cinema with a machete, and that mo this particular movie, okay, you've had people ringing up trying to uh, justify this and justify that in regards to the movie. The movie itself, the content of the movie, is it's obviously about uh, gang problems right. and um, postal cover. But what I'm saying is that, 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 that not everybody, but certain like, members of the um, community are reveling in this nonsense. And, right. and it's, it's causing... Years ago, when we were kids, uh, you, we, we obviously, like when you were kids, we didn't have the phones, we didn't have all the things... Well, we didn't, but I mean, uh, th that's, that's the product of every generation, that they're always going to move forward, you know. They didn't have cars, and before that, they didn't have bicycles, and so on and so forth. But, Andy, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for your input, I think. Uh, you had the last word. Rosanna is in Hendon. Rosanna, what would you like to say? Well, you were saying about what we're afraid of. And I think that we are just heeding the warnings of our parents and grandparents who were in Germany and, and uh, well, I mean, I'm thinking particularly of my, my father-in-law who was thrown out of what was then Czechoslovakia. Yes. And he remembers the barber who had cut his, his hair since he was born and all his family waving and smiling as, he went, as they went. And he said that the support that they had of, of, uh, of, the, of the Nazis, they voted in an, an anti-Semite. And it's, that's what, it, what we are afraid of. That is the whole uh, thing. It's uh, not... And what would you... And, and, and I, I ask this very calmly and kindly. What would you point at in Jeremy Corbyn that you think has echoes of Adolf Hitler? Um... Obviously, I, I'm not comparing him well, you, you, with, with with respect. You just did. Okay. Well, the the fact that he has never backed down from an opinion. Um, he he has got a, a one way uh, opinion as far as Israel is concerned, and and of Palestine. We're not we're not talking about Israel, and we're not, not talking about Israel. Palestine. We're talking about Nazi persecution of the Jews, and and as a non-Jew, uh, and as someone who doesn't hold a torch for Jeremy Corbyn, I, I find that I find that breathtaking and I, and I think you really need to back it up, Rosanna. So what what is it about Jeremy Corbyn that reminds you it's of Adolf Hitler's Nazi things. Party? It's not it's not just one thing. It's Well it's you can you can name as many things as you want. 
Well, each each thing shows that, that and he always. Well, what things? What are we talking about? Because I, I I'm quite the strong on 1930s example. Germany. I, I know exactly how Hitler marshaled anti-Semitism as a political force and and, and used it long before he, he he achieved full power. He used it as an incredibly potent weapon. So where where are the examples of Jeremy Corbyn using anti-Semitism as a political weapon? Well, I'm not saying he's using it as an anti. Uh, we as probably a, shouldn't have mentioned the Nazis then, I Rosanna. Probably shouldn't have. Okay, I shouldn't have said. But here you are. That view, but you actually said. To me, you actually asked what we're afraid of. Yes, but you know how this program works. And yes. then, I, then after then the what, okay, you, after I, the I what, you get maybe, the why. Maybe using him and saying and um, putting him with a Nazi was, was wrong. Well, not but. maybe. I mean, either you can point at something that says that reminds me of the Nazis, or you can't. And at the moment, well, the you can't. At the moment, the feeling at the moment, the undercurrent of anti-Semitism. Is, is, is like the undercurrent leading up to the war. There was, there, there was no undercurrent of anti-Semitism in 1930s Germany. It was absolutely everywhere. Well, maybe before that then, as it was leading in. The, 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 the blame of, of, of everything on, on the Jews, not everything, but a lot of it on the Jews. And so, so again, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry to badger you, but I, I want an example. I just want one example of something that stands comparison with 1930s Germany that Jeremy Corbyn could be reasonably accused of. Because I've got nothing. Um... No, it's not. It's, it's little things. That's the thing. It is little things. Well, there's nothing little about the Nazis, is there, or, or, or the Holocaust. And you did begin by saying that you fear repetition of, of that era and those politics. And we end with you, I, I think, perhaps um, recognising that there's no evidence for that position at all. The reason people fear him coming in is that, that the undercurrent is getting louder... And yeah, but then it, I'm going to ask for examples again. Well, look, at, at one after the other of, of Labour candidates who feel that they can come out and say things that are, are denying the Holocaust or... or, um, or I'm not aware of any Labour candidates denying the Holocaust. Um, I think they, they may not have de denied, but they have definitely belittled. And um, Plenty of people on the right do that daily. Yeah. I mean, most of the biggest Holocaust deniers one can think of are right-wing, not left-wing. So again, I'm, I'm really struggling to see... And you're not alone in doing it, and I, I certainly don't want to um, minimise your, your concerns, and, I, and I'm confident that I haven't. But if, if people are going to reach for the Nazi analogies with love, Rosanna, they need a hell of a lot more evidence than you've got. Otherwise, actually, you, 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 I mean, it's a vile thing to accuse someone of. It, it's, it's, it's not something you should do lightly. He reminds me of Hitler. It is the subtext of what you've said. What do you fear? A repeat of the persecution of Jews undertaken by the Nazis. That's an appalling thing to say about somebody if you really stop and think about it, unless you've got evidence. And undercurrents and... and are not evidence. Graham is in Newcastle. Hi. Hi, Graham. Hi, Eddie. How are you doing, mate? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. I'm good. So, uh, do you have a religious faith? No, I'm um, an atheist. Um, I don't believe in God. There might be some spiritual, but not really religious at all. Not at all. But I'm, I'm a, I voted Remain in the, uh, in, the, in the Brexit election, but I'm going to be voting for the Brexit party uh, in the North East. Because I want to get rid of the Labour Party, like as in not just not just the Labour Party from the North East. I think we should get rid of the Labour Party completely. And is that for race or religious reasons? Well, I've got friends who are trans. I've got friends who are Jews. Uh, there's, I was talking to a mate of mine in, uh, from America uh, a couple of days ago. He told me he will never come to Britain if Corbyn gets him because he he equates Corbyn now with the National Socialists of the 1920s. That's what he's told me. And he jokingly said. I wonder what date will be the uh, the crystal knack, the crystal knack, you know, the night of the broken glass. Hmm. That's where we're heading. But you're not a man of faith. Not at all, no. No. How does your, well, a how does your atheism, if that's how you want to describe it, how does that colour how you view politics? Not in the slightest. I don't believe, you know, I, I don't believe there's a God, but I believe, you know, I respect other people's religions, but I don't think that should reflect uh, in your choice. And you think anyway, I don't think it matters about this election because, and this is, I'm going to put a hypothesis forward, I reckon there's going to be another general election in about 12 months' time. Well, so who knows what the, the future holds, Graham? Who knows what the future holds? No, but I'm, but I'm interested in, I'm interested that you... Steady, even with the best of intentions, Boris is not going to be able to get Brexit through. There's going to be multiple, multiple court cases to stop it. 
Well, well we're, we're not doing Brexit, we're Barbary. not doing election predictions, Graham. Uh, we're doing faith. And as an atheist, I am glad to hear from you. Albert says, how can the authorities stop what I thought was a lawful and human right to peaceful protest in this country? People who fought wars and died for don't parents have any rights? Yes, they do. The protest, the protest goes on, Albert. What they can't do is use loud hailers to shout at the children and intimidate the staff. The protest goes on. And he says, you've totally lost me on this. I'm not Muslim. I'm a normal English person. Lay off the children with your support for these nut job woke values. Otherwise known as tolerance. Amma is in Streatham. You're on the radio, Amma. Good morning. Good morning, Nick. What you I to? just called to say that I completely agree with the parents okay. with regards to um, stopping this teaching. I don't know about Birmingham, but definitely in London, some children leave school not able to not able to read or write. Why are we not concentrating on fund fundamental education? And why are we teaching children oh, all of these things? Let kids be kids. And with okay. regards to the protest as well, I wanted I'm to say, wrong. sorry, Nick, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Okay. I wanted to say that no, by the term protest, I mean... The suffragette protesting, was it ever peaceful? She jumped in front of a horse. Like, when are protests really, really peaceful? It's about being heard. Yes. Let me ask you this. The, the dad with whom we just spoke, he's got two children at a school. How, yeah. does that, how does one of his children say to his little mates at school, I've got two dads? Or indeed, how does someone else say, I've got two mums? How are children meant to process that if they've not done? The thing, this the thing isn't about like they do it every day, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> these classes. Are, I mean, I, go on, sorry. No, sorry, you could finish. Sorry, Nick. Well, these classes, I, I, I think, as I recall, there are about four classes per term. Per term, four lessons on it. I, I still think that they should be, but four lessons per term are still lessons. Children are leaving school without fundamental education. They can't even do math. Right. And you're teaching them all of this stuff. I'm not being funny. I'm a single parent, Nick. Right. Are they going to start writing um, books about single parenting? I'm not a single parent. I mean, I mean, do, are they going to start doing classes on that? I mean, does it really matter? At the moment, we should be concentrating on teaching them math, English, and but teaching they, them how to go out and work. And it's not happening, but we're teaching them LGBT, who the parents are. But they don't have to be mutually exclusive, do they? We can do both. Surely. Well, I mean... Well, but, but and you're right, is, we, we need to improve. I absolutely agree with you. We need to improve literacy and numeracy. But I don't definitely. think it should be at the expense of tolerance, surely. But the, thi the thing is, I mean, there's a difference between teaching tolerance and teaching LGBT rights. I mean, they don't teach in my daughter's school. My daughter's seven. They don't teach in her school, oh, about single parenthood. They don't teach about... I mean, these are lessons that just aren't... I mean, if the children are leaving school without fundamentals of education, like, as you said, numeracy and literacy, mm, mm. that needs to be what we need to be teaching our children. And it's just as simple as that, so they can leave school and work in the community. All right. Amar, good luck. As a, as a lone parent, single parent, I wish you nothing but success. Thank you for your input. Right or wrong, Robert in Eastbourne. Robert, you're on the radio. Good morning. Yeah, all right. How you doing, Nick? You good? Yes, good, sir. Thank you. What do you say about um, this judge's ruling? <coughs> me. I say the judge really should rule that schools shouldn't be... Schools... There was a time when schools were just to teach people academic stuff. Mm. It seems now they're just programming centres. I mean, I do like... I agree with a lot of what you say, but... Early, it's quoting lines from The Guardian, and then talking about facts in the next breath, it's... Well, the I world's gone mad. You've got... I I was quoting a court report from The Guardian, not from its editorial pages. But, come on, using The Guardian as any kind of reference is, is, well, is insane. My dear it's chap, so it's my, unbelievable. My dear chap, it was only a quote from the man with whom I was speaking because he was quoted in The Guardian. He wasn't quoted in The Mail, where they said oh, that he right. was using a peaceful protest. I just, Nick, I just think in this world, if you treat people to treat others how you want to be treated or your children to be treated, there's going to be no problems, you know? It's, but that's exactly well, what they're doing, mate. Yeah, but why, why, have they, why has the child got to go to school and learn about any relationships at all? Be, be they women and men, people, well, how, they how, would, how would they learn? If one of their little chums has got two mums, how is he or she going to learn about that? And, and it's not like Nick, they Nick, don't Nick, sit Nick, there it's every down day. To the parents. It's not down to the school to decide what, what, what that kid has in its brain and well, how that kid should think. It's not down well, to the school. Well, I, I personally think that religion right, and politics should be kept out of school. Right. Well, at the moment, at the moment, in this Robert. world, please, sorry, let me finish. I've, got, I've come out of a meeting to, to do this. But at this moment in time, the world is so balmy, you've got people from a religion outside a school saying that they don't want children being taught something. This, this same religion that agrees with marrying a nine-year-old, it, it's, it's insane. It's insane, Nick. It's, well, the world's gone mad, especially please, in this country at the please moment. Please stay on the line. Please stay on the Mohammed is in Liverpool. Mohammed, you don't agree with what Robert's saying. Tell him why you think it's important, Mohammed. Good morning. 
Good, good, good morning, Nick. Um, well, I think the as as with a lot of things these days, there's been uh, a lot of uh, mishandling uh, in the press, leaflets being handed out, which are completely fictitious in regards to what is being taught in this curriculum. Um, if we look at the, the evidence of what's been presented, um, Nazir Afzal, uh, distinguished Nazir Afzal, who uh, the former chief prosecutor for North West England, he in fact uh, was the prosecutor in, in the Rochdale grooming cases. Mm -hmm. um, wonderful man. He was brought in pro bono to look at the curriculum and try and mediate between the parents uh, who uh, were, were aggrieved at what was happening and the school. And he said, uh, and I quote, there was no specific reference to LGBT in the curriculum. There is no reference to gay sex. No. And he said there was actually reference to equality as there should be. Those are his words. But, but if we address Robert's point, is it the role of the state to decide what our children should be learning in these areas? Doesn't it call fall to mum and dad, is what Robert's saying, Mohammed? Well, well, we, we, we live in a world where you, there is different views, different people. Well, well shouldn't um, they be reflected? Well, let's bring Robert back in. That, that, that's what you're saying. It's, it's down to mum and dad, Robert. Well, I want to put one thing out there firstly. I respect the fact that the Muslim people have stuck together. They, there's something happening and, and they, don't, they don't like it and they stuck together as a community. And if there was more of that done, then maybe the, the government wouldn't be able to drive the wedges it does between us and so it can control certain sections. I mean, but if I just want to ask this question. If I was to stand outside and, and, and if I was to say, well, I don't want my child to learn RE, I don't want it to learn about a religion where a man marries a nine-year-old, would I, would I make it to the end of the street without getting, you know, potentially my teeth kicked out? Mohammed, what would you say in answer to Roberts? Robert? <laughs> well, I mean, I can't really sort of comment on what happens in, in specific places or what's generally happening in wider society. The specific point is in respects of what is happening outside of this school. Um, I think that uh, I, I don't refer to the group of parents. I mean, I appreciate they all identify themselves as from the, I mean, the Muslim community, which is, which is absolutely fine. Um, and but, isn't that the reality, Robert? That this isn't a faith-based, this is a local authority education-based decision. Nothing to do with no, a Muslim organisation. There's, there's a bigger on. picture to it, Nick. And, and this on. divide thing that's going on, it's just channeled to the meeting now. It's, it's gone into the bottleneck of a river. And we've got absolute pandemonium. I mean, it can be seen for the clan world that it's becoming. It's, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I mean, a, a certain set of rules that everyone needs to follow. I really everyone respect needs to follow you. needs to be laid down. R Robert, I, I really respect you, but what's ridiculous about trying to teach tolerance? I just don't get what's ridiculous Nick, about Nick, that. Where, where is this distolerance? You show me this distolerance. You're telling me people like Owen Jones really got beat up. Come on. Stop. Um, I, I, hang on, I, no, no, that, I, I'm not sure. This is the, te the the Guardian columnist. What, what I'm trying to say, Robert, and I'm grateful. I'm grateful for your input. While we quickly check that, is I hear what you're saying, but in a world that is so, particularly a country that is so charged at the moment and so riven, if a class that, by the way, it doesn't happen every day. My knowledge is it doesn't even happen every week. I think it happens a couple of times a term that it helps people learn about same-sex relationships, whatever it might be, it's got to be a good thing. Robert, thank you. Final point for you, Mohammed, on this before we move on. Yes. Um, yeah, basically, I think um, I, I feel that the those parents really should be engaging with the school. Um, and I, I know that the, uh, Nazil Ashtal again uh, alluded to this point, that the head mistress of that school actually... Uh, you know, wanted to sit down with the parents, I know. go through what, what ages were appropriate to actually start teaching this content. Uh, That's Sarah Hewitt Clarkson of, Clarkson, of whom you speak. Robert, thank you. Mohammed, thank you for your views. Uh, that was an attack. We've just got the details of that. The journalist Owen Jones outside a pub in London. Now, we have to tread carefully because I'm not sure if there were charges of pending with this, but, but this dates back to August when Mr Jones claimed he was attacked by three different people. Uh, and the police did get involved. So let's leave that there because it could be that we're going to accidentally stray into chart live proceedings. So, Robert, please understand that we have to stop there because I'm not sure if it's live. Keisha's in Croydon. Do you agree with the decision? Hello. Um, hello. Good, good morning. Sorry. Good morning. Um, 
Good morning, Nick. Um, okay, the judge decision is the judge decision. Whatever the, the judge decides is final at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, at least they can still protest. But my whole yeah. um, opinion is this. I do think that politics, religion needs to stay out of school. Yeah, it's as simple as that. Um, the, pro- the people that done the protest, they have a right how, to their belief. How are children so going to get just a working knowledge of Christianity, Judaism, Buddhism, how are they, if, if we're not going to give them just an idea who God is or who Buddha is okay. or who Muhammad, how are we going to do it? All right, well, there's just too much resources nowadays to be worried about that. I mean, come on. Like, parents will show their children what they want to show them. They have the right to do that. Ah, this is what ah want hold on. Ke- Ke- it, yeah. Keisha, Keisha, if they're yeah. enlightened parents, if okay, you are, I mean, if you're a... Pre- Nick, me and your views are not going to be the same. But it doesn't make you a bad person no. and it doesn't make me a bad person. No. It's as simple but, as that. But yeah. hold on, I mean, you don't Keisha. See, yeah? If you'll allow that some faiths have real issues with homosexuality, they no. almost, they almost, hold on, no, no, not you, no, no, not you, not you. But some extreme branches of faiths, I speak of extreme Judaism, extreme Islam, Islam, they, they just cannot permit homosexuality. What's going to happen to their children when they go to school in a country such as the United Kingdom where, thank God, we have no problem with it? Okay, Nick, let me ask you a question. Go ahead. I mean, I'm, I'm 30 odd years old. Hmm. Yeah, and I've, I was born in this country. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I could be considered as Christian if, if anything. Yeah, but let me explain this to you. I never once in my life saw gay people being attacked Children making no. fun of gay people in school. But you don't. Children laughing at children. I never, I never see. But where does, darling, where does it come Keisha, from? Keisha, Keisha, Keisha. Where did it I've come never, from? Where did I've all never the seen, concern come from? Nick? I've never seen a murder, but I know they happen. Just because I've not witnessed it, it doesn't mean oh, it right, doesn't I happen. I get that, Nick. I get that. Yeah, but I mean, we're not talking about murder here. I mean, I can well, understand if gay people were being murdered, parents right. were being violent. So, when you bring your child to school, you have respect for the parents regardless. To my knowledge, I've never seen a car yeah. being stolen in front of me, to my knowledge. But it goes, I mean, you, you don't have to witness a crime to believe that it happens. Come right, on. Then, we, we, we're going to be concerned about a lot of other things as well, then. Should we teach them about, I mean, come on. Like, should like we what? Should we go in the class and start talking about Iraq and Iran and this yes. and that yes. and oil and yes. Like, come on, like, yes. like they're yes. too young for all of this. Give them a chance to grow up. Wait until they get to step well, let, school. Okay. Like, let, let's bring someone right, else in. Need- let, I, I resp- I'm not cutting you off. I just want to bring someone else in. I respect your position, but I want to bring someone else in. Uh, Nisa is in Chichester. You're on the radio. Good morning. Good morning. I thought I should give a try and give a balance on this, although I'm not expecting to change anyone's mind. Right. Well, talk to Keisha. People, Ke- Keisha's saying let kids be kids. They don't need to know about this stuff. When people are saying let kids be kids, mm. I, I didn't know I was trans by the age of six, but I knew I wasn't like the other boys by the age of six. I first tried to kill myself because I didn't feel right and I didn't feel like I belonged at the age of 13. I tried again at 15, 17 and 18. I did not find out trans people even existed until I was 21. Mm -hmm. And whilst I understand people saying, let kids be kids, if your kids are gay, they already know by that age. What age did you guys, like, know you like boys and girls? Like, it's it's something you just know? Mm -hmm. Saying... Maybe if I'd been taught about this in school, maybe it would have saved me a failed marriage. Maybe it would have saved me four suicide attempts where I felt like I was a freak that didn't fit in in society and had no place in it. Maybe, maybe... I really hope all okay, the people that have been calling in this morning have let, got no gay let, kids and no trans okay, kids. Okay, Nisa, so I'm not... Nisa, let me please. just bring Keisha... Goes, yeah, Keisha, I've just asked... Keisha, go yeah, ahead. I understand, and I sympathise with you. Okay, 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 don't it make sense what needs to... Well, I get what you're saying and I sympathise what, in what way? Just oh, in a sentence, so, Keisha, in what, in what, why does it make, why does it not make... In a sentence, Keisha, because I want to bring Nisa back in. Why doesn't it make sense what Nisa is saying? No, I mean, I'm not saying what you're saying don't make sense. Like, what I'm saying is that you can't just dump it all and say because the school didn't... Okay, uh, okay, want. okay, okay, don't go, don't... Nisa, uh, Nisa uh, how can you know that had you had the benefit of these classes as a younger person that you wouldn't have had issues? Because when I talk to trans people who are even trans communities talk to each other quite course, a lot yeah. because we're we're quite we're quite an ostracised community on the whole. Um, 
in talking to my peers who in some cases some of the trans people i know are nearly 15 years younger than me right you know may i have your age them, just out of age? i'm 32 right yeah okay yeah. um i know a trans girl who is 17 right who at the age of 12 was taught about what she was and was like oh there's nothing wrong with me then for feeling that way no, there's nothing wrong with you feeling that way. And as for the, it's about family, my family is about as liberal and left-wing as you can get. <laughs> I mean, we're talking when I was brought up nearly 30 years ago. There's a difference in understanding and there's a difference in awareness, there is. But what, However, let, let's come back, Keisha, to that 12-year-old yeah. now, who is possibly more comfortable with the life that that 12-year-old has than they were. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's got to be, again, a good thing. This 12-year-old, hopefully... I mean, I mean, it's good for them, but, I mean, what's good for one doesn't make it good for all, and this is what you've got to understand. We you can't tread over other that. people's space just to suit yourself, and that's what you're doing. How, it's as how, simple as that. How that's would, what you're doing. You're, like, saying... How will like your saying, children... How will your yes? children be adversely affected by classes such as these, Keisha? I mean, What's look, your I've, fear? I've got, I've got sons. Yeah, I've yeah. got sons. Yeah. And then my children start coming home to me... Talking about, um, mom, um, can I kiss a boy? Mom, can but, I marry a boy? I mean, I'm well, not teaching them that. So no, to me now, you open up a Pandora's box for me. But the schools yeah, aren't you teaching what I'm them. Saying? The schools aren't teaching them that. They're suggesting that if your son did want to get in the same session, that we should all be tolerant of that. Yeah, but you can talk to me about that. I mean, that's what I'm here for. I that's hear I you. And him. that is to be credited. And, and, and I will deal but, with him accordingly. And Keisha, it doesn't mean that I'm going to be angry Keisha, with him. Keisha, do you recognise not every parent is going to be as liberal and understanding as you? Do you understand? I get that. But then that's why they have well-being for the children that are not being supported. I have to leave it there. Thanks to you, Nisa. Thanks to you, Keisha. Be well with all your children and families and whatever else it might be. Uh, Rob, and we will talk about this. I, I, I rest assured, I'm just waiting for the, um, the information to be properly processed. That looks fairly huge to me. It also looks very, very similar to the stuff we told you about a month ago, about what the American uh, negotiating objectives told us about potential futures of the NHS. Have a look at the Telegraph today as well. We're 14... Um, free trade experts, WTO advisors, trade negotiators, all warn about the paucity of the sort of deals that we'd be able to secure, particularly within the time frame that Boris Johnson arbitrarily imposes upon proceedings. So all of the experts, pretty much, um, assessing the situation as dangerous. If we, if we really do try to rush stuff through for political reasons, then what we end up with will be bad, even worse than it needs to be, obviously worse than what we have. But then ask yourself how the media will report it. How, how, for example, did they report Boris Johnson retreating to a withdrawal agreement already rejected by Theresa May that he himself had described as absolutely impossible for any British Prime Minister to countenance? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Go to the top of the class. Most British media describe that as some sort of victory. <laughs> so he, he, he negotiates a rubbish trade deal? What do you think? The uh, elements of our media that pander to the forelock tugging tendency of the population will say, will they say, well, hang on, this is obviously worse than what we had before? Or will they say, oh, mighty, mighty king, well done? I'll leave that hanging. 10.38 is the time. Rob is in Totteridge. Back to the question of, of why. Why no apology? What's your theory, Rob? Because all we'll ever have is theories until Mr Corbyn explains himself. Hi, James. Well, Hello, I guess it was uh, almost evident as well in that clip you just played. Uh, Jeremy Corbyn's apology previously, his apology this morning, is I apologize that hurt has been caused, I apologize for hurt caused. Yes. And it's a very clever language. It's, so she says it, it avoids accepting responsibility. And that's what the <laughs> Chief Rabbi's intervention yesterday demanded. It demanded someone to say, I, I've got it wrong. You know, I had some past associations that were wrong. I said some things that were... Uh, a bit too far and may have incited others to be anti-Semitic or may have uh, been blind or omitted to call out anti-Semitism and then it was my face. And four years ago when Jeremy Corbyn became leader, leader of the Labour Party, he had the opportunity to say, you know what, my past behaviour is a backbench MP. I'm just, just going to pause you there and very briefly and kindly to point out that the Chief Rabbi didn't make any of these points. The Chief Rabbi's complaint was specifically about failure properly to investigate and punish people within the party 
who had been accused of anti-Semitism. So uh, you, you have a valid point, but it's not relevant. You can, you can tell me if I'm, if I'm, if I'm misquoting the Chicago, but uh, he, I believe he called Jeremy Corbyn's words an mendacious lie when he said that all cases had been investigated. That, exactly. That so so it was specifically character. about investigation. It didn't... I mean, you're perfectly entitled to make... Um, capital, and I think you're right to do so, out of his past associations and some of the people that he's invited into the House of Commons, but we don't need to do that, and we shouldn't do that, because that is not what the Chief Rabbi was talking about. Uh, again, uh, we can... We can uh, I'm, no, no, I'm sorry, to, but I'm saying facts. So it did, I mean, again, I think we're moving the, on... The, but no, we're not. Chief, it's very Chief important Rabbi that we... Is, no, it, the, it, the, it, the word used it, was it, complicit. He has been complicit in anti-Semitism because the claim that all the complaints and all the investigations have been completed was a mendacious fiction. There's plenty there to get your teeth into without getting your, start, your teeth into stuff that the Chief Rabbi has not referenced. OK, OK. Look, I, I, I read the Chief Rabbi's piece and I saw that what he'd said is Jeremy Corbyn's comments in the ITD debate were a uh, mendacious lie. Um, yes, and, about um, the investigation. It's got nothing to do with past association. Is it not about his personal character, though? That doesn't matter. It might be, but you, you weren't talking about his personal character. You were talking about his past associations. The reason why he didn't apologise for the failure of the investigations is because he doesn't want to apologise for inviting some dodgy characters into Parliament. That doesn't make sense. He also doesn't want to apologise for saying that this is all why. And, and, and the reason I, I bring up this past is because four years ago, Jeremy Corbyn could have said, ah, oh, there's some problem here. You see, I, you, you see, I don't know why I, I bothered talking, Rob. I've just said to you that I the hear, chief rabbi was not accusing him of any of the things you're now talking about. So why can't you confine the conversation to what the chief rabbi accused him of and his okay, refusal to apologise? The conversation on the terms that you want to, Jen, that's absolutely fine. Yes, the terms that I want to, as in reality, or the terms that you want to, as in things that the chief rabbi didn't reference. Why would we do that? Okay, okay. <sighs> Well, well, I mean, to, you, you should get these ducks in a row before you come on the uh, on the show. We're talking about what the chief rabbi accused Jeremy Corbyn of and Jeremy Corbyn's refusal to apologise. We're not talking about anything else. I apologise to you, Rob, for not making that clearer. Although, meh, meh, I kind of think I did. Ali's in Great Yarmouth. Ali, what would you like to say? Hi, James. Uh, just like to say first time caller, first of all. Very well. Um, tried plenty of times, but I uh, gave up sometimes. But anyway... Um, <laughs> Basically, I don't. My reason why I think he's not apologising is um, really Jeremy Corbyn never has been, never will be a politician. He is by heart, at heart, a political activist. Just like any true activist, you have to stay true to your principles. If you are not true to your principles, your activism stands for nothing. Hmm. And that is why I believe he is refusing to apologise. What's um, the principle? You, What's you, the principle that he's standing by? Here? He, he's got his own principles. I think that at, 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 this is my belief. I may be wrong. I may be right. Yes. But it, it, his principle, and by his associations and from the talks that we've been told he's done in the past, he is obviously pro-Palestine, all right, and is obviously anti-Israel. Um, what that goes to now the problem with talking about uh, talking against. See, you, 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 you remember, I did just Israel. I did just discipline the last caller for for bringing yeah. in issues that have nothing to do with either what the chief rabbi said yesterday or Jeremy Corbyn's refusal to no, apologise. No, I'm, 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 yeah. think... I'm not accusing you of that yet. I'm not accusing you of that yet. I'm just warning you what happened to the no, last no, no, caller. No, 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 no. I'm right. trying to explain why I think he's an activist. So Go in on. the past, he has been pro uh, pro Palestine. All right, um, and he probably still is pro Palestine. Right. I think he's every now, British, is... most British governments, the last several years have been in favour of a Palestinian state, haven't they? Exactly, yes. correct. Correct. Okay. However, however, obviously Israel is not in favour of a Palestinian state, all right? Now the problem is anyone, anyone who talks about that is at a big risk of uh, looking to be anti-Semitic. And that is probably his fear, all right? He doesn't want to uh, um, say sorry because he probably then would need to explain. He, you might be questioned as to why um, about his associations and so on and so forth, and be asked to say sorry about all of that. He doesn't want to start essentially a domino effect. Well, hang on, on this is this is this is from principles. this is from just over a year ago. All right, let's have a. And I'm not entirely yeah. sure what's contained within this clip, but I trust my producer mm. implicitly, so I'm sure it's going to be both fruitful and pertinent. I'm sorry for the hurt that's been caused to many Jewish people. We have been too slow in processing disciplinary cases of mostly online anti-Semitic abuse by party members. We're acting to speed this process up. 
People who hold anti-Semitic views have no place in the Labour Party. People who use anti-Semitic poison need to understand you do not do it in my name or the name of my party. You are not our supporters. And anyone who denies that this has surfaced within our party is clearly actually wrong and contributing to the problem. I want to make it clear that any government I lead will take whatever measures are necessary to support and guarantee the security of all Jewish communities and their culture. I acknowledge there is a real problem of anti-Semitism that Labour is working to overcome. That shoots your fox a bit, doesn't it, Ali? I tell you why there's a big difference here. A yeah. year ago was a year ago. Right now is an election campaign. Right. All right. So, so you that, think that it's a... I, uh, uh, sorry, I, that wasn't me. Sorry, sorry, that sorry, that I, spluttering I wasn't a reflection on your contribution. Sorry. But you think that I, what I, he did last night was a vote winner? No, it wasn't. That, so, that's, w that's my point. That's my on. point. He's not a politician, um, James. No, no, but your Boris whole point Johnson, was that he can't apologise because yeah. dot, dot, dot. And there he is apologising absolutely unequivocally. So that means your theory... A year ago, a year ago, a year ago. He's yes. not a good politician, James. <laughs> he does not know how to play politics. He's Ali, I'm just going to put you on pause because I don't think you heard what the words that I said. Your entire argument was that he can't apologise and he didn't apologise because if he did, dot, 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 dot. And then there yeah. he is offering an absolutely unequivocal apology. So you're just wrong, mate. I, I don't think I'm wrong. I don't think I'm well, wrong. Well, that is, Again, that is point, why British politics context. is where it is. You said he can't apologise because X would happen. There he is apologising. But it's a year later, so apparently everything's different. Linda's in Washington, in Tyne and Weir, not in the United States, and joins me now. Um, I'm focusing a little bit on the fact that the Brexit party is so lamentably low at 3%. Why do you suppose that might be, Linda? Morning to you. Good morning, good morning. Um, well, because um, obviously uh, Nigel has given um, half his seats up uh, for this, um, you know, for, for the election, yes. which was very good of him to do. Um, and on the other hand, it's the only way to get our country back uh, selling its wares around the world and what? healing, starting to heal our uh, divide up. We've got to get it done. But make no mistake, Brexit is not gone away. We, I promise you this, we will end up as the second party in this country. Get Sorry, rid of that I'm, Labour I'm, Party. We've I'm got confused. To... Hold on a second, Linda. When you say we, you mean the Brexit Party, do you? Uh, I've heard a lot of, uh, not just the Brexit Party, a lot of uh, Labour voters are going to do this, believe me. Sorry, wait, so, but when you say we are going to be the second party in the country, do you mean the Brexit Party? Yes, or... yes, yes. But Lin Linda, you're, the party's at 3%. Yes, of course it is, because... Uh, we, we, we know the electorate are not stupid. We know what we have to do. We've got to loan the Conservatives our vote right. to get this country uh, back on keel and to start trading properly. We, we, we're bleeding <sighs> to death with our economics. We can't go on like this. Sorry, in what way? Did you say we're... In what way are we bleeding to death? Because we've got to get out there and uh, free trade. We can't just be stuck uh, in between... Um, the but, devil in the deep blue sea in between many, um, okay, uh, many, uh, many people would e e e EU L L and Linda, uh, free mm. trade it's got to be one or the other Linda, many people would argue that the problems Britain is having currently with its economy, although it's more robust than others, but the problems having is because of that Brexit decision it's going to make the country poorer, is what a lot of people would say um, I, <laughs> I think we, if we see in the EU we'll be uh, a lot poorer and I'll tell you what our country's gone right back. You think we're, we're great? We've got death on the on, on the streets. Uh, we, we're in a terrible state. So is Europe. But, Europe's but, in a terrible state. But lastly, you're, you're, and I think you're talking about the number of teenage stabbings. Are you saying that's the fault of the European Union? It, it, it's the whole. It's our, our whole way of life. Um, our that's... children can't get the skills that they need. They can't get the jobs that they need, especially in the north. I've seen it. I've had to live with it like everyone else. We know the story. We right. can't be told the story. We've lived the story. We know what's happened in the last 45 and, years. And all this is and the we fault... we are not happy. OK, lastly, all of this is the fault of the European Union, Linda? It, it, it's had a big in, impact. It's Gosh. not... No, of course not. Oh. But it's... Uh, no, no, you can't say... I'm not saying that. But uh, uh, we have lost a lot... A lot of our culture, we've right. lost a lot of our ways, we've lost a lot of our um, uh, skilled jobs and uh, our dynamics. We've just, we've just lost a lot. 
I'm grateful to you. Linda, thank you. Watch this space. 10.36 is the time. Back to Nigerians. Regina is in Lee Green. What, what, what would you like to say, Regina? Hi, um, James. I am originally from Zimbabwe. My name. You forgot my name then, didn't you? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm a bit nervous, so don't please do forgive me. me. Carry on. Okay, so um, first of all, I want to say I don't agree with Boris Johnson's um, way of politics. I don't think he is racist. He stereotyped Nigerians. And but what, what is the stereotype? What is the stereotype here? They are quite aggressive when it comes to making money. And um, my experience, both back in Zimbabwe and here, is that they will put money before people. So um, the most extreme one, which would you, you, would, you be, believe, would you be comfortable saying that about a, a, any other ethnicity or, or, or religious grouping? Um, not if that's their trait. Not if I've seen that a majority of them so are if, like that. So if somebody felt that Jewish people were like that, you'd be cool with someone saying that they're almost Jewish interest in money? Well, I'd have to ask them why they say Jewish. And they'd say the same as you. They'd say, they'd say, I've met a lot of Jews and they're really interested in money. Which is what oh, you're you saying to me about Nigerians. No, no. You'd have to give me concrete examples. The thing is, I've had... So, um, hello? No, I'm, I'm, really, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, yeah, so you've had real life experiences of greedy Nigerians. Therefore, you think all Nigerians are greedy. Not all of them. Well, that's what he said. He said a Nigerian in oh a handful. So he's referring to a handful uh, of Nigerians, but he's well, just not mentioning yeah. that. He's making it look like he's referring to all of them. Because surely I'm all saying, all societies all societies have got a handful of greedy people in them, haven't they? I think Nigerians. A lot of people would say that they are. Yes. They they Go are on. aggressive. And um, I think yeah. their relationship with money is, yeah, it's unhealthy. And, and, if, some, and if somebody said that about Jews, how, how do you think the chief rabbi would feel? Like, again, if it's true of a number, I mean, you, right, have, you yes. have to have examples. So it can't be anti-Semitism because the Jews really do run the world. <laughs> no, no, no. I said you have to have, you can't just say something without backing it up. Well, you did. But I've said I've got examples, real well, life examples. Yeah, and then, and, then, and, then, and then we went from suddenly saying, I think he's right, to saying, well, it's only a handful. I thought the question was, is he being racist in general? No, the question not... was, what do you think he means? Well, if he means it's all Nigerians, then I don't agree with him. What but else could it mean? And, and, or... A Nigerian interest. What does that mean? It means it's a national trait. Then he is wrong because I don't think it's all of them. Nigeria is a very big country. Yeah, but it's just some of them then. Knocking at the door there, Regina. I'll leave the Jewish parallel hanging. I'm not comfortable with it, but seeing as the other party leader is under attack this week from the chief rabbi for failing properly to address accusations of anti-Semitism, it seems to me a pertinent question. Um, when he was editor of The Spectator, and he said an almost Nigerian interest in money. Explain to me how that phrase is in any way philosophically or morally different from describing an almost Jewish interest in money. Jewish people historically, of course, have had to deal with centuries of allegations of, of greed. If you accept what, um, I don't know, Lord Attenborough, David Attenborough tells us, if you ex and I do, I believe him, <laughs> if you accept what he tells you, if you accept what the scientists tell you about the danger to uh, the, the whole planet and the danger uh, to the climate systems and the danger to people uh, currently, particularly in the developing world uh, and to wildlife, let's not forget that too, if, if you accept the nearness of this catastrophe um, and you believe what people tell you um, and I, I'm speaking from a position of um, not total inertia but too much inertia myself um, if, if the environment isn't the issue of the election for you and, and it isn't the issue of the election for me I'll be honest but, but why isn't it I wonder because everything else that we care about that we talk about that we think about uh, relies upon us having a planet to be on to happen at all so if if the environment isn't um a, a, a vote issue for you uh, you know a, a, a clincher as to which party you will vote for or which individual you'll support uh, what is if it's not the environment uh, david is called from paddington hi david hi see that yes i think it absolutely should be it must be 
When you look, the CO2 emissions from the world are actually still going up. They haven't even got to the top to start going back down. And what extinction rebellion seem to miss is it's a world problem. You know, their, their, their nonsense about having a people's assembly is just trying to change the system within England. It's ridiculous. They have to go with the political system in the world that's in place, which is, the, sadly, the United Nations. And they have to get that constitution changed there. You're never going to get Putin, Jinping, Netanyahu, you know, Modi of India, the Brazilians, you're never going to get the whole world, but we have to. By 2050, you know, countries like Shanghai, Dhaka, uh, Bangkok, they're all going to be underwater. And London's very threatened as well. And this is in 30 years' time. Uh, well, hang on, David, before you go any further, I mean, I think it's a, a little unfair to say that Extinction Rebellion don't realise it's a global issue. I think we all realise it's a global issue. No, I mean, in their policy, their policy is to have this kind of people's assembly or something. It's nonsense. It's utter rubbish. It's a worldwide issue. But if, we, if we have a little people's assembly or get Ginganguli in London, it's going to do nothing. The CO2 emissions are still going up in the world. But isn't there, aren't, <laughs> we, yeah, but aren't there layers to this process of campaigning and, and awareness raising, David? And you, you begin local, you build interest, you build political heft around your topic, and then you can focus on the global well quite right but you know if we get the, if we vote now for a conservative government or a labor government it doesn't matter which one we vote for we, we, we we've got another five years towards the time when london will be underwater and if you want to have kids or if your children want to have kids everyone morally if they think about it must now be voting green it's the only one to vote for otherwise you don't care for your kids sorry Wow, strong message from David. If you don't vote green, you don't vote, you don't care for your kids. Your election call today, Margaret Beckett. Welcome to the programme. Thank you. We are ready to go. Paul in Enfield is first. Paul, what's your question? Hello, Dan Beckett. It's, um, uh, a question I have for you is uh, uh, what a lot of us are going through, just uh, regular people on the street, is who the hell to vote for. <laughs> um, so I, uh, as a gay man, for various comments that uh, Boris Johnson has made along the way about uh, people like me, what am I called? A tank? Uh, can you hear me? I can hear you, yes. Oh, hang on one sec. <laughs> My silly car is trying to take over the phone call. I'm sitting <laughs> still in the car. Wow. <laughs> so I'm, apparently I'm a, t uh, what am I, a, a, what's the phrase, a tank top bum boy? Is that right? That was what he said, yes. Yeah, so I'm not going to be voting Conservative for that and many other reasons. So I then have to look and say, who do I go for? And as a staunch Remainer, I consider the Liberal Democrats, but um, as the polls are showing, it's unlikely that they would come into power. And since you go for a, a second referendum, um, I'm thinking, vote Labour. The, the specific question I have for you is, I believe that Labour are instigating what I would call a jealousy tax. So I'm nearly 60 years old. I've worked all my life. Say there's me and two mates. Um, I've got money in the bank. They've got money in the bank. And all my life I've wanted a seaside flat. So last November, I bought one. It was empty for six and a half years. No one wanted to live in it. So I'm not depriving anyone of a second home. Um, and my mate, say, goes out and buys a, a Porsche Carrera and a speedboat hitch to the back of it for the same money as my flat and another mate goes out and buys a boat in the harbour in somewhere like Brighton and pays moorings. I want to know why it's fair that I would have to pay a double council tax on my second property that is paid for with money that I've already paid tax on and by the way also paid a handsome 3% to the government as a thank you to them for letting me buy my second home in the first place. All right. It sounds like uh, Paul is thinking of voting for you, Dave Margaret, but he wonders why you're double taxing him as he sees it. Uh, can I begin with a very trivial point? There is really no need for everybody to call me Dave Margaret. Margaret will do fine. All right, Margaret is. <laughs> um, okay, thank you, Margaret. Uh, uh, Paul, yeah, I, I take your point, and I can see that you feel that that's a bit unfair, uh, especially, as you say, because you've worked for the money you've paid tax on it already and so on. Um, mm -hmm. But the fact is, you, you are in a position, as indeed uh, am I, and possibly Eddie as well, although I won't presume that, um, where you are able to make a, a slightly higher contribution. You can afford to, because you can afford to buy your second home. Okay. And th the money for all the services that we all need, actually, because you, like uh, everybody else, will need the services of the police and the fire service and all those other things that nobody thinks about when they complain about how much tax they're paying. 
Uh, and I'm, I'm afraid, you know, um, I take the view that it's, that people like me should pay a bit more. And okay, I, I fear that perhaps you can afford to too. So okay, so you sound like my local garage where it says <laughs> press this button if you want to add 25p for charity. Um, I adopted two children, um, uh, and I never expected to have children. Going back to the fact that I'm a gay man, um, and I have paid over 100,000 easily in looking after them. So I do my charitable bit. I don't understand why Labour are suggesting I do another charitable bit because you say I should do it because I can afford to do it. It doesn't make sense to me. It, it isn't charity, Paul. It's civic responsibility. I, I do that with my second council tax. So mm, may I make a comment yeah. about that? When I'm, when I'm in my flat at the seaside, I'm not calling upon the services of the ambulance brigade in London where I live. So I'm paying two lots of council tax anyway. I'm paying full council tax on my London property and I'm paying full council tax on my seaside property. And when I'm in one, I'm not using the services of the other town. I, I understand that, Paul, but equally I'm sure you understand that the council and the local community has to provide those services. There's a, a background cost to making those services available for when you want to go along and use them. So it, it, it's, not okay. that, it's not that it's completely, you know, that, that you're not um, having any sort of charge on the place when you're not there. Why don't you just tax anyone that you consider to be rich and just say, listen, mate, you've got plenty of money, so we're going to take a few grand out of your wages because uh, you can afford civic responsibility to everybody else. Maybe That's some people would feel. think that maybe some people would think that you're rich, Paul. Not least because you've got a car that <laughs> and a car that interrupts your phone calls. <laughs> <laughs> it is five years old, my car. <laughs> <laughs> All right, listen, you've had a fair crack of the whip, Paul. We appreciate the call. And I'm just trying to dig out the relevant clip, but that misspeak, if it was a misspeak, from the Prime Minister on the amount of compensation offered to families in places like Worksop and Doncaster, devastated by flooding, of course, last month. Um, I, I, I can't help remembering the time that Diane Abbott got her numbers wrong in an interview with Nick, which um, is still spoken of in... Uh, hallowed tones in, in conservative corridors. So um, we, we've got the local advice, which is £500 for households and £2,500 for businesses. And, and I think we've got the clip of what Boris Johnson said on this radio station just over an hour ago. What I will say is that this government has uh, stood ready, done everything that we can to help the victims of, of flooding, uh, both in our uh, community uh, support schemes, our business support schemes. Uh, we have uh, five thousand pounds available for every household that's been been damaged. I, I can't find any evidence for that claim, which doesn't mean that it's not there. I mean, obviously, we're, we're turning on a sixpence here, but the um, remarkable notion of a Prime Minister either not knowing or misleading people over a national emergency that he was roundly criticised for not properly recognising as a national emergency. So let's look for some good bits if we can find them. What went well do you think for the for the Prime Minister? Six minutes after 11 is the time. David is in Chelsea. David, what would you like to say? Um, I'd just like to say that I find your attitude incredibly patronising. Well, I've ba barely very, started, David, but we're not talking about me. We're talking about Boris Johnson. What do you well, think, went, what do you think went well Boris for Johnson apart. You asked a specific question about Boris Johnson. How does he get away with it? Yes. He gets away with it because he's got a certain amount of charm. Right. Whether good or bad, if you like him or don't like him. Sorry, he gets away with gets what? Away with gets away with telling lies, according to you. Well, no, not, not according to me. Well, according to the general consensus then, if you like. Yes. Not, not according to Boris Johnson. He, 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 he's not telling lies as far as he's concerned. Right. Now, every so... politician in my life has told lies. Everybody. They all tell lies. Tony Blair was one of the biggest liars. Yes. Okay? It's nothing new. You have to go through it yourself and to decide what, what, so, listen, what I, I you just, think is true or not true. Well, I, no, I, I don't I, think I, we do. We don't decide what is true and what is not true, David. That, that's kind of the point, but I'd hate to patronise no, no, you. What I mean was, who is telling the truth? Yes, truth but that's not what you there? said, but I, I don't want to patronise you. So tell me what you think went well in the interview this morning. I think his charm comes across... No, I'm not interested like in his that. charm. I'm interested in the content of the interview. The content of the interview? Yes. I didn't listen to all of it. 
I didn't listen to parts of it. Well, that's all right. The parts that you heard. Halfway through. The parts that you heard. I don't think anything came out particularly well. Oh. I I don't think any politician comes across particularly well in this election. But one thing I would like to say is I'm not voting for Boris Johnson. I'm voting for a front... Well, hang on. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're not not interested in how you're voting during um, the election period because there are constituency issue specifics that we're not allowed to broadcast. So, so... But you're, you're implying that Boris Johnson is president of the UK. Right, We're David, not voting I, I, for Boris Johnson, are we? I, I, well, okay. Um, I, I'm not quite sure what to say to you, David. You, you sound very angry, but you're not entirely sure what I'm you're not, angry I'm about. Not, I'm not angry. I okay. just find that your attitude a bit patronising. Yes, but some people. And it's very easy some when some people not feel patronised. Some people feel patronised when they've been made to feel silly. Well, that's Nick Ferrari. He should have said, should have come across with that. He should have said, "Look, I'm feeling silly with your answers." No, no, no. I was talking do. about. I was talking about you. But Nick, I, was, I wasn't conducting an interview. If I was conducting an interview, I might have asked different questions. No, but, I might have, no, I might have, but, I might have but how do you know? You didn't, you didn't hear it. How can you criticise Nick? The bitch, you I, the bit, now you're being patronising. No, I'm not being patronising. You're being silly. That was the point I was making. That's what I mean about you being patronising. That's what I mean silly. about you being silly. No, you love that, don't you? What? Telling people they're silly. Pardon? You love telling people they're silly. Only silly people. Oh, God. Look, listen. No. Carla's in obvious. seven oaks. Carla, what would you like to say? I'm a Boris fan. Yes. And, um, Why? Everyone's got a past, and um, I think people have got it in for him a little bit at the moment. So what, 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 is, what would you say to them to show them the error of their ways? What would you point out as his sort of crowning glories? Well, I just think he's, you know, he's being natural, and he's, he's doing a, g- a good job. Yeah, that, well, um, then it'll be easy to come up with some evidence. Well, I don't know. I mean, you've got to give the guy a chance, haven't you? I mean, at the end of the day, more voted out uh, than voted in, and I don't even know why we're we're having this discussion. It's because you rang the radio station, Matthew, with your your phone. But but, but we we all voted out. Yes, you're you're a Boris fan, you said. I'd like to know why. Well, because I just like his personality, and I I think he's... um, but as a prime, but as a prime minister, as a prime minister, what what do you admire about him? What would you point? If somebody sceptical listening to this said, "Well, give me some, give me some arguments, some points I can make next time I'm having a political I, discussion." I, I just think I just see him as a stronger leader. Yes, and the evidence for that is well, just just just, just personal opinion. Just, no, but what's he done to inform that opinion? Well, I mean, he's not really been in the job that long, has Well, then he? we can go for the eight years he was Mayor of London, if you want. You, you live in town. Well, yeah, but you could also say the same about Sadiq Khan. I mean, Sadiq Khan but, is... But uh, we're not, are we? We're talking about you being a fan of Boris Johnson and me saying why. So why would you, why would you answer that question with Sadiq Khan? That doesn't make any well, sense at all. Got, you, you've kind of got me there, but... Uh, well, I haven't um, got you. It's all I'm just waiting for you to give me one reason to admire Boris Johnson from his record. Well, I just think this morning with Nick Ferrari, yes, uh, who's, who's a, a brilliant producer, uh, presenter, presenter, yes, like I, I agree. Well, and no, I agree with the first bit. I also agree with the second bit, but I, I didn't mean to say that out loud. <laughs> yeah. But don't, no, don't, don't, don't wriggle off the hook. What, what, what did he do or say that you can point to fairly unequivocally as evidence of his qualities? I just think overall, in that hour that he was on LBC this morning, yeah, he defended himself impeccably. Well, he, he got. Think, what, Nick, what, give me the bit you thought was impeccable, because he was wrong about. He didn't know how many trade negotiations he had going on. He, he was wrong about the amount of compensation that was given to people who'd been flooded. He refused to answer the question of how many children he's got. I could go well, on, but I won't, because that's not fair. Just give me one thing to put on the other side of the scales that he handled really well. I just think overall, um, he was kind of attacked and put to challenge. Um, and as I, as I, as so, I, what, what challenge do you think he dealt with well? Uh, well, just overall, I don't yeah, But know. just give me one example, Matthew. You're on national radio, bigging up the guy, and, and we're short of admirers, so just just give us the sort of, you know, evidence. I, I, I'm not sure, um, James. Um, OK, mate. But it, That's fair enough. Know. That's fair enough. So you're a big fan, you just don't know why. Well, there you go. You're, you're clearly more of a Corbyn man, aren't you? Well, you clearly don't listen to my programme, Matthew. It's not a football match, mate. It's not a question of picking a side and then defending it. I'm, you could probably describe me as one of Corbyn's harshest critics. I know that his closest advisers do, so leave me out of it. Back to you. You're a big fan of Boris, but you can't think of a single reason why. <laughs> All right, mate. Listen, have a nice weekend. And you, Matthew. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response 
were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought? Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. Bye now, please, no more.